Hey, what's going on everybody? This video is going to be a basic introduction to creating your own custom classes, properties, and methods. Now, I do want to say up front that this video is just going to be an overview. It's going to be the bare basics. If you want a deep dive, I intend on creating deep dive content later on in this series. But for now, we're just trying to familiarize ourselves because we've been using objects and we've been using methods and properties, but we haven't really talked a whole lot about how they're defined. I think by going through this content, you'll have a better picture of how things work and you'll be more prepared when this content comes up in the future. So if this stuff's hard, <laughs> just go through the video a couple of times and it'll start clicking with you. And if it's easy, well then look forward to the future content because we're gonna go over this stuff a lot more in depth. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. I'm also gonna drag this up just a little bit. There's a little green line, it's driving me crazy. So we're going to be using the Solution Explorer over here on the left. It's a little small, so just zoom in with your eyes. What we're going to do is right click on this YouTube here, and we're going to click Add, New File, Empty Class. Now in here, we're going to give it a class name. So just like we have this class program, we're going to create a new class. Classes are used to represent things. The example I gave in another series is that a class is kind of like if you have a spreadsheet, it's like the column headers. It describes the structure of your data. An instance of that class is like a row with its own individual data points. So for example, we could create a class to describe a person. An object would be a Caleb Curry. <laughs> so that's what we're actually going to do in this example. We're going to create a person class and we can basically structure what a person would look like in data. So this thing here that's automatically put inside of this class is a constructor. Constructors are used to create an instance of the class. It says here that it's redundant, meaning we don't actually need to put it in here. It'll do it automatically, so we can just delete that. Later on, you can create custom constructors, and in that situation, you might need to leave that code in there, but for this one, we're good. Now inside of this class, we can put other members. Members is a general word to describe properties, methods, fields, constructors, all of those things, everything that goes inside of this class is known as a member. The first type of member we're gonna be talking about is the property. So a property just contains a value. To create a property, we say public, and then we give it a data type, let's say string, and we're going to call this first name, capital F, capital N. And then we're going to put curly braces. Inside of these curly braces, we're going to say get semicolon and set semicolon. We can do the same thing for a last name, and this is defining the structure of this person. So every person needs a first name and a last name. Now let's look into using this class. So now we want to create an object of this class. So we know what a person looks like, but now we want to actually create one. So go back into program.cs, and inside of this main, we're going to say person, which is the data type, and then we're just gonna call it lowercase person, which is the identifier, the name of the variable. And we're gonna say new person, which is how we create a new object of a particular type. In this case, the type is person. Then we can go down here and use that person variable and say person dot first name, assign that the value, let's go with Caleb. And let's do it again with the last name. So this is how we create properties. It stores data. The next thing I wanted to talk about is a method. Methods do something. It's just a function inside of a class. So let's go back to our person and let's create a method. The way we create a method looks like this. We're gonna say public. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a method that's basically going to give the full name of the person. So first name plus last name. So we're gonna call it get full name. And this is a method, so it's going to have a return type of string. And then you put parentheses and then curly braces like so. Then all we have to do is say return first name plus last name. We might wanna add a little bit of a space in here so it's not just Caleb Curry with no spaces. So do it like that. So we concatenate first name, space, last name, and then we return that. So anytime we call get full name, it's going to give us the full name of this person. So if we go back into the program.cs, we can do a console write line. And what we're going to write is person.getFullName. And then call it using the parentheses. 
All right, let's see if this works. .NET run, and you can see it prints Caleb Curry. So another thing to know is that properties and methods can kind of do the same thing. It's kind of a general rule that properties usually just store a value and methods do something, but it's not always entirely true. For example, we can customize properties to do different things. Here's an example. We're going to create a property and we're going to call it full name. And we're going to expand this a little bit. So we're going to actually put the curly braces down on the bottom and we're going to say get with its own set of curly braces. And what this is going to do is it's going to return first name plus last name, like so. And then we need a semicolon inside of here. So it kind of looks like this here. So what we're doing is basically creating a property that mimics the method we just created down here. So let's try this one out and see if it works the same way. Let's go back to our main program and we're going to delete this person.getFullName and we're gonna replace it with person.fullName like so. Now we don't use the parentheses because it's a property. Let's do .NET run and you can see it does do Caleb Curry. Now if we wanted to put that space in there, we could. We just have to go in here. Forgot that, sorry guys. Like so, perfect. So now you can decide to use the property version or the method version. Totally up to you. So there are a lot of capabilities with properties and methods inside of C-sharp. Most important thing is just to familiarize yourself with some of the syntax, start getting some practice, and later on it'll be clearer when you need to use what. You may also hear the term field, which is very similar to a property, but it's private. So a property is used to access data from the outside. A field is just used to store data on the inside. So we can just say string, we'll just call it middle name, and we'll set this equal to my middle name. And there we go. Now we have to assign it a value here because it's not accessible from the outside. So the value has to come inside the class. Another thing you might notice is it starts with a lowercase letter. That's a convention for fields. You may also see it start with an underscore. Either way, totally fine. Just get used to something and stick with it. So we're gonna deep dive all of this stuff later on. Just know that these things exist. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.